How dare you expect me to pay to get into this party? You've never met a Karen like me before. R slash Entitled Parents Our first story we'll be reading today. Entitled Mom Tries to Get in My VIP Pool Party Without Pain From user Shayana After that, Try to Pull Malicious Compliance on Me? Enjoy the Backfire From user Wild Kane. Thank you so much to our authors for letting us read your stories. And if you're an author who would like to hear your stories next, please submit them to the r slash Mr. Reddit subreddit. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. Entitled Mom Tries to Get in My VIP Pool Party Without Pain Hey, Mr. Reddit. I've been watching for a year now and I finally have my own Entitled Mom story. This just happened, by the time I post this, two days ago. My family has an annual pool party at our city's baseball stadium. We planned this event for months in advance and sent out info for people to join our party. Of course, people who do want to go have to pay to get in. So we set in our plans, money, and surprises. The day comes and the party starts off good. Kids are playing in the pool while the adults mingle near the bar. A few hours pass and in comes Entitled Mom with her entire family. It was her, her husband, her three boys, one of their girlfriends, and her two girls. Entitled Mom used to be close to my mom, but cut ties with her family after the wedding incident. That's another story for another day. They walk in and I stop them. This is the conversation that follows. Entitled Mom, what are you doing here? I'm here for the party. Really? Do you have $320 to get in? It was $40 per person. It paid for everything at the party. Um, no. Besides, I'm already here. Go on, kids. Go play. The kids didn't move. I was close friends with them, and they knew not to mess with me or my family. Well, go on. They know that they can't because they weren't paid for. Now either pay or leave, please. No. In fact, go get your mother. She'll let me in. In case you don't remember, my mom doesn't want to talk to you. Unless you want to apologize for the wedding incident. Entitled mom just scoffs and tries to walk past me to my mom. Now here's a surprise, my mom was going to tell everyone she was pregnant. To make this make sense, I'm 16, so stress and anger isn't good for her. I blocked her path. My mom and dad noticed and my dad walked over. Hey sweetheart, what's the problem here? Mrs. Entitled Mom doesn't want to pay to get in or leave. Hey, Entitled Mom's husband, do you think you can talk to your lady? This is a paid party. Sure thing, bro. Come on, honey, let's go. The kids had already walked out of the party. Entitled mom was getting red in the face. I glanced at the bartender, who was radioing security. I'm getting into this party one way or another. Now, let me in. She did that sarcastic clap when she talked. If you want to get in, pay $320. No, get out of my way, you brat. She tried to slap me, and I caught her hand. Her husband was standing with her kids, and my dad was prepared to help me when things got dirty. He knew I could handle myself, but he liked to fight alongside with me. <coughs> Entitled mom tried to punch me, and I ducked. I still had her other hand. I twisted it and turned her around. I pinned her to the ground, and I saw security coming. My dad traded spots with me, and I talked to the security guards. A few minutes later, the cops arrived. My dad got off of Entitled Mom so the cops could take her. As he does so, she springs up and tries to come for me again. I dodge with ease. A cop tries to cuff her and she slaps him. Later, she got arrested. They asked if we wanted to press charges and my mom said yes. I just asked for a restraining order. The party went well and our surprises were taken greatly. Hopefully, the next Entitled Mom I meet doesn't want to fight me. Next we've got, try to pull malicious compliance on me, enjoy the backfire. Hi all, recent lurker and first time posting, 
so go easy on me. Also, not a native English speaker. I wanted for some time to post this story. However, I've been told by my wife that people might not believe me. I hope it's not too long-winded. Our cast. We've got me. We've got my girlfriend at the time and future wife-to-be. We've got the bank manager, and we've got the bank manager in another branch. It happened almost 20 years ago. I was a newcomer to London, UK. Met my girlfriend. Opened a small business, which didn't last and closed in less than half a year. My girlfriend and I rented and moved in together in a house. At this point, the direct debit for the rent of the house was set up on my personal bank account. This was quite inconvenient as I had to manage personal finances, business finances, and shared expenses for the house. So, the girlfriend and I decided it was time we open a shared bank account. As it happened, our individual bank accounts were with the same ABC XYZ bank. We thought opening a joint shared account would be a piece of cake, right? Wrong. One day towards the end of the month, girlfriend, also self-employed, found time in her busy schedule and we pop into my bank's branch in the afternoon. There's barely anyone in the bank. I go to the cashier and explain the purpose of our visit. I'm told to wait and someone will be with us shortly. Enter bank manager. Hi, pleasure to meet you. I am bank manager. I've been told you would like to open a joint account, but I don't see you having an appointment. Sorry about this. We, girlfriend and I, were not aware we needed one. Is it possible to do it today? It doesn't look like it's very busy here. Bank manager looks at me with a condescending smirk. This is not how this works, I'm afraid. We are actually very busy in the back offices, which you don't get to see from here. You need an appointment. How about tomorrow? Me, after consulting girlfriend. Great. Is it possible to do it sometime after lunch then? I only open my business in the morning, and it's the most convenient time for girlfriend and I because she is also very busy in the morning. As soon as I say this, I catch a malicious glint in his eye. I'm afraid not. You see, those matters can only be taken care of in the morning. Can you do 9.30 a.m.? It's the only slot I have. Otherwise, we might have to reschedule you for another day. It will still have to be in the morning, though. Now this is a bummer. For the above-mentioned reasons, girlfriend and I need to get this sorted out and as much as this smells like BS, we decide not to press the issue. I've learned a long time ago not to upset the people who serve me. Tomorrow it is, 9.15 a.m., girlfriend and I are lined up waiting for our appointment. We bring all documentation we've been asked, bank statements, photo ID, proof of address, utility bills, etc. Bank manager greets us with a smile and invites us into a small meeting room. I note the table even has small microphones pointing in the direction of each party, presumably to record meetings. This is not an uncommon setup in institutions, so I ignore it. I make a mental note that the LED on the microphone is not on. Bank manager notes how well we are prepared, asks for our bank cards, and starts going over the documentation. He looks up our account details on his laptop and tells us he will not be able to open a joint account for us. In fact, he says, opening a bank account for us will be impossible. I ask why, and here he starts feeding us BS, with a voice which as much as it's condescending is also polite and sounds almost logical. Almost. You see, Mr. OP, a short while ago, ABC Bank merged with XYZ Bank, and so we became ABC XYZ Bank. For the general public, we are ABC XYZ Bank, but internally, ABC and XYZ are still very much separate entities. You see, when you opened your account with us, you in fact opened it in a former XYZ branch. Your girlfriend, however, is an actual ABC client. I hope it is clear to you that under those circumstances, ABC XYZ Bank will never be able to open a joint account for both of you. This cannot be right. You guys are ABC XYZ Bank, for all intents and purposes. All documentation we have is labeled ABC XYZ Bank. You're advertised as ABC XYZ Bank. People know you as ABC XYZ Bank. 
you are ABC XYZ Bank. Therefore, you should be able to open a joint account for us. I watch him carefully. I see he doesn't like my tone or the fact that I called his BS. Well, you might be able to open a joint account if, for example, your girlfriend closes her bank account and reopens a new one with us in our branch, or vice versa in your case. The point is, you cannot have a joint account with the current setup. The rest of the conversation went in circles, while he, with his most condescending tone, explained the same thing over and over several times as if he was talking to children. We go back and forth and we get the same answers. This is where I say something that will come to bite me in the butt later. My words verbatim. Well, this will not work for us. If we cannot find a solution, I will have to take my business somewhere else. He looks at us with a weird smile on his face. I can't exactly place it. There's something sinister in it. He bids us good day and we exit the branch. Girlfriend and I sit on the benches outside for a cigarette and coffee to discuss our options. She mentions that two streets down, there is another, smaller ABC XYZ branch. We could go there and ask. We go in and it's crammed full with people. We waited our turn, explained again why we are there, and other bank manager comes to the window. Now, please bear in mind that this is a very small branch. They don't have meeting rooms like in my branch. The conversation I have with other bank manager is heard by pretty much all bank staff and majority of pensioners who are there to cash off their pension checks. Hi, we want to open a joint account. We are both ABC XYZ clients. We went to the large branch down the street and we were told this is impossible since I am an XYZ client and my girlfriend is an ABC. Can you help us please? I am sorry? What? I repeat myself. She stares at me and asks me to give her more details. As I start explaining, she calls a supervisor to listen in on the conversation. Their eyes widen in disbelief the more I progress with my tale. I can see them both barely managing to contain their laughter and yet with professional faces, they patiently wait for me to finish. Who told you this? The bank manager in my branch. Are you serious? Yeah or at least the bank manager in my branch was. The laughter that followed shocked me. There were tears on other bank managers' eyes and on quite a few other people too. For a moment, I even thought to myself that they were laughing at me for being an idiot who doesn't understand the internal workings of the bank. I get nervous and I feel a shade of humiliation coming over me. After what felt like forever, other bank manager composed herself. She apologized and said this was the biggest BS she's ever heard in her career. She explains that what we've been told is not technically true, at least to the point where it can affect the customers. Apparently, ABC, XYZ are still reconciling a few things internally, but opening a joint account is not an issue and offers her help. We accept. She explains that my girlfriend will be the lead name on the account since she was the original ABC client. That, she assures me, in no way will affect us. 20 years later, this is still not an issue. Other bank manager opens the new joint account for us and gives us the details written up on bank stationery. Before she sends us on our merry way, she apologizes for the troglodyte bank manager is. She also gives me information on the internal escalation procedure should I decide to raise the issue as a complaint. I said I will think on it. We are happy. We have a new joint bank account. I realized that in the process of opening it, we completely forgot to move the direct debit for the house rent to the new joint account. Never mind. I decide I will do so next time I go to the bank to pay the bills. I might as well rub it in bank manager's face if I see him. Two days later, we received the joint account checkbooks in the post. Excellent. A day later, the cards. Brilliant. A day or so after we get the pins for ATM withdrawals as well as the welcome letter. Magnificent. Everything is in place now. I am just about to forget the incident with bank manager when a couple of days later a letter tumbles down through the letter box. It is for me alone. I open it and I read something to the following effect. Dear Mr. OP, 
Following our appointment on this date, as per your request, your current account with ABC XYZ is now closed. We regret to lose you as a customer, blah blah blah. Please find and close the check for the remaining amount that was left on your account. Sincerely yours, Bank Manager. What? I blink rapidly at the letter and reread it several times. It still reads the same. This guy closed my account. This means the rent for the house will go unpaid. My mobile phone bill too. The inconvenience exceeded the fingers and toes I could count on. My fury knows no bounds. The next day, I don't open for business again. First thing in the morning, I am in front of the bank with the letter he sent me and asked to see him. He popped out of the back offices. Ah, oh, Mr. O.P., I've been told you wanted to see me, but since you are no longer banking with us, I will not be able to attend to you since we are only serving actual clients of the bank. For your information, I am a customer. I slap on the desk the checkbook and the card of my joint account. What in the world possessed you to close my current personal account? Maybe we should move this conversation to the meeting rooms, he says after noticing other clients listening in on our conversation. He disappears for a minute and later directs me to one of the meeting rooms at the back. I sit down and I notice the red LED on the microphone is on. Recording us, are we? Good to know. So, how can I help? He says with a crap-eating grin. You closed my bank account. Why? I show him the letter. You asked me to. Don't you remember? During our last meeting? I did nothing of the sort. Yes, you did. You said you were taking your business somewhere else. How could you not remember? Oh, I remember all right. What I remember word for word from our conversation is me telling you, if we cannot find a solution, I will have to take my business somewhere else. In what world does that mean, please close my account? Another crap-eating grin. Well, Mr. O.P., I can see English is not your first language. When you make a statement like this in UK or other English-speaking country for that matter, that means you no longer wish to use the services of the other party. So, I obliged. Maliciously compliant jerk. Just now did I realize what that first look on the first meeting was. Me gearing up and raising voice. Did the big if escape your notice in the beginning of my sentence? And even if it did, you cannot close my account without following procedure. This is one of the oldest banks in the UK. Surely you have such procedures and you don't rely on the vague interpretations of non-English speakers. I know you have procedures in place for this. Every bank has them. I had an account in another UK bank before I joined ABC XYZ. I closed it before I switched over to ABC XYZ. So, I know you would also have something similar. You need my explicit and signed request to close my account. But you said, I am not done, I shout. A security guard pops his head in the corridor and looks in our direction and asks me to keep it down. Bank manager stands up and walks towards him, waving him off with his hands. He turns around and is about to sit down again. His gaze flickers to the red LED of the microphone on the table. One minute, Mr. OP, he tries to say. Don't you dare turn this recording off. We will need it for what may happen next, depending on how this conversation goes. He tries to interject, but I cut him off. Do not interrupt me, please. This is your escalation procedure. I will be following it to the letter to make a complaint against you. I pull out the notes I have from other bank manager how to escalate this and I show him. His eyes widen. He is starting to sweat. You will reinstate my account immediately. The direct debit for this house rent is due in two days. The direct debit for my mobile phone is due the day after. My account better be active by then. If not, you better have your evidence in place for when I escalate this. But sir, the account can no longer be recovered. Oh, really? Just like I couldn't open a joint account? I don't believe for a second you know what you're saying. It turns out, I can have a joint account and the evidence is in front of you. You will reopen my account with all the bells and whistles that were attached to it 
like direct debits, etc. You will also transfer this direct debit from my personal account to my joint account. Then, I expect you to get back to me and let me know how you are planning to make up for the mess you put me in. Bank manager is sweating bullets at this point. My last sentence triggers something in his demeanor and he suddenly relaxes a bit in his chair. That same smile I couldn't place on the last meeting with him crops up on his face again. How much do you think would be an appropriate compensation for your trouble? I get that weird feeling again. He is up to something. I examine him. The sweat on his brow is still there, but he is kind of leaning forward, closer to the recording microphone on the table. My brain jumps up a gear. I lean to the microphone on the table and choose my words carefully. Mr. Bank Manager, for the record, I am not here to bully you nor the bank for money. If I am to understand you correctly, it sounds like you are suggesting monetary compensation. If this is the case, I am open to your suggestions or any other ideas you might have. All right then, how much do you think is an appropriate compensation? He looks worried again. Again, I am not here to extort you or the bank. I will not put myself on the record by demanding X amount. It is you who has suggested this twice now. I am willing to consider your offer and possibly accept it if it's reasonable. I put on the table my business bank account card. This is my business bank account, which is also with ABC XYZ. Have a look at my daily deposits for my business. You will note on average, I deposit around 500 pounds every day. Your nonsense has costed me two days of business. This is over 1,000 pounds in turnover. Please tell me what you think is an appropriate compensation for my loss. Bank manager, visibly sweating again, starts mumbling. Well, given that this is turnover and not actual profits, I could offer you like 500 pounds compensation. But like I said, this account can no longer be recovered. Me cutting him off. 500 pounds sounds very acceptable to me. Do you want me to sign something acknowledging this? No? I guess we still have the recording from this conversation to get back to. And please, do not start again with the nonsense of my account being lost. This is your mess, and I expect you to fix it. We exchange a few more words. He kept asking me to be reasonable, as if I was not. I kept insisting that this is for him to sort out. I left him my mobile number and asked him to get back to me by the end of the business day. I left him there, standing dumbfounded with his oversized gray suit. Just as I'm about to walk out of the bank, I see other bank manager entering the branch. She recognizes me. Oh, hi. Thanks for all your help with the joint account you opened for us. No problem. It was my pleasure. Are you here to escalate your complaint? No. For your information, our two branches are merging, and I'll be taking over this one. If you decide to escalate, please come and see me. Funny you should say that. Bank manager closed my personal current account. We've been having a shouting match until now. I might be escalating more than you know. He what? Closed your account? Why? When? What? Listen, you've been lovely and very helpful to us. I will have to get back to you on this. I've lost way too much time with bank manager already and need to get my deliveries for tomorrow organized. Pointing to bank manager, who still looks at me from the back, I say, why don't you ask him for the details? Or better yet, listen to the recording from my meeting with him. See you soon. I walked out. I see her eyes narrowing as she looks towards bank manager. I really have no time for this. I go about my chores and get a call at 4 p.m. It's bank manager, and his voice is audibly strained. Hello, Mr. O.P. This is bank manager. You'll be pleased to know that we have reinstated your current account with us. We also credited the agreed compensation of 500 pounds. You will also receive a replacement bank card in the post in the next few days. I thank him. Knowing that this is truly over now, I can afford to relax. I update my girlfriend and she is shocked. I give it no more thought. Everything is well and over, and I am 500 pounds better off. I don't escalate this further, mostly because my sinking business is demanding a lot of my time. 
I note that the house rent direct debit was also transferred to the joint account. So, the idiot did something correctly at the end. Nice touch. The aftermath. A month passes. All is well. It is time to pay the house bills again. Being busy with the business, I choose the last possible day to pay the bills. I do that online now, but back then I had to go to the bank. So there I am, in my favorite branch of ABC XYZ Bank, waiting on the line, counting the money while juggling with the paper gyro credit slips for each bill. I am at the front of the line when the recorded announcer chimes in. Cashier number six, please. Number six is the furthest from me. I make my way and put all the money in the gyro credits under the window. I look up and surprise. Oh, uh, hi, Mr. OP. He has flabbergasted and stares at me. Well, hello, bank manager. How are you? Seeing that he is now manning the cashier desk, I make a point to address him by first name only. All good, thanks. All is well, all is well. He starts to fumble with the money while counting them. One of the gyro slips gets jammed in the computer. He tries again while sweating like a pig. Another cashier arrives with a let me do it attitude while he stands behind her looking over her shoulder. Before she is done, however, he makes a hasty exit without so much as an eye contact. If I must guess, he got demoted to a cashier. How I wish I was there to see it happen. On my way out of the bank, I see other bank manager talking to a client. She notices me and gives me a small smile and a nod. I smile and nod too. All is well indeed. And congrats to our regenerals of the day. Demon Gaming, Corsi Husky, TJK Films, Sermo B Readings, Catherine, I Don't Really Know What To Put As My Name, and R3 Pits. You know what to do. Become our next Regenerals by dropping as many Rees as you can in the comments below. That's all for now, but don't be blue. I'll be back soon with more stories for you. Remember to listen to Mr. Reddit every night so your dreams will be wonderful like you are and bright.